So, right, I'm Shane Cannon. I'm also with the Data Analytics and Services Group. So I'll, um, I'm one of the uh, developers and maintainer uh, of Shifter and also work on a number of container-related efforts. So I'll be talking about container use at NERSC. So quickly, we'll go through an intro to containers, talk about the role of Shifter. Uh, we'll walk through kind of some uh, Shifter in action, and then we'll look at container usage at NERSC. So first, uh, an intro to containers and Shifter. Um, and it's likely that many of you um, have used containers already, so apologies if this is uh, something you're already familiar with. But uh, in the container space that, you know, still the, um, the big kahuna is Docker. That's the most uh, popular kind of approach to, to using containers. And what Docker really did is it provided a simple set of tools to build, ship, and run um, applications or services. So you use the Docker tool to build images that capture all of the application's requirements. You put those in a recipe or you can commit them manually. Um, you build this image and then you push it to Docker Hub, which is sort of like GitHub for images, or you can push them to a private registry. And then you can use that to share those images and then you can go to a execution host or system and use a Docker engine and now there's other ways, uh, but you use something like Docker image to pull that image down and execute it. So what exactly is in an image? Um, you can kind of think of it as kind of like a, a snapshot of, um, you know, your host file system, uh, if you were using Linux, for example. So it includes the base OS, the Linux operating system. So all the libraries that are included with the distribution typically. Um, it can include other uh, libraries that you've installed, uh, other tools, the user code itself, the, the part that you're really interested in, uh, in executing. And it can include data, but um, there are some limitations on that. And then it can also include runtime settings, things like environment variables, working directories, uh, how you want to execute the application. Um, for network-based services, there's other things that you can include in that, but those are typically not relevant to HPC container use cases. So, um, you know, those that have used Docker are familiar with it, you know, it's pretty cool. It's, you might sort of wonder, well, like, why don't we just have Docker on the, um, on Quarry and let people use that? And the primary reason, and this is actually, starting to change, but one of the biggest reasons has been security. This Docker security model is kind of an all or nothing um, kind of thing. So if you're able to run Docker on a system, then it it's almost means you can, you effectively have root permissions on that system, unless it uses some really new uh, recent features. Another issue is uh, kind of system architecture on our Cray systems. As you've heard, we don't have local disk and Docker kind of assumes that. And so that creates some, some barriers. We also want it to integrate and sort of play nice with our resource management system with Slurm. And uh, there's some kind of mismatches there. And then uh, this is really not as much of an issue these days. Uh, it used to be a big problem with just the kernel requirements that it needed. But uh, these days, usually what we're running is, is modern enough. And then the other is just complexity. It's like another thing that we would have to manage on the system. So for this reason, we uh, nurse developed Shifter. It's an example of an HPC runtime. This was actually one of the first to be developed. We wrote it back in like uh, 2015, I think, or something like that, maybe even earlier. And um, what we wanted to do there is kind of leverage as much of the Docker ecosystem as we could. So all the build tools and image repositories and stuff like that, but just replace the runtime piece to make it more um, amenable to HPC systems. So we, we really wanted to make sure we addressed these security issues, but also thought about things like scaling and performance as well. And so Shifter is really designed to address those. So um, while, why will users like using containers in Shifter? Um, one thing it is, is you can develop an application on your desktop and test it locally and then run it, push it and then run it on, well, I've still got Edison. Well, I do need to update these slides, don't I? Uh, you can run it on Cori uh, and without, you know, additional work. It also enables you to sort of solve your own dependency problems uh, yourself. So 
you know, rather than having to ask a nurse staff member, can you install this other package for me? You can just build the image the way you want it, put any tools you need in it, and the world is your oyster. Um, you can even pick a different OS than maybe what we provide on the system. So, for example, if you're not a big fan of uh, SUSE, then you could use CentOS or Ubuntu or something like that, and that may make it easier for you to get the packages you need uh, for your application. And in, we've seen some examples of this in uh, Lori's talk. I, it actually can improve um, application performance, especially startup in some cases. And I've got a slide talking about that. And finally, it can sort of improve reproducibility and sharing. So you can, it's easier to go back since that image is kind of a durable thing. You can go back and reuse that same image years down the road. And um, even if things on the system have changed, that image has not. And so <clears throat> it can be good for making sure something can run over a long period of time. So um, again, you know, why it's useful for science, I touched on some of these. One is this reproducibility angle. It really means that you can keep these images, you can, um, uh, in the registry, you can put them in publications and it makes it easier for somebody to go and try to reproduce your work, for example. Portability, because you can take, you know, I can run it on my laptop, I can run it uh, you know, on a cloud system. If um, other sites uh, have an HPC runtime, then you can run it there, and then you can you know, run it on Cori or Perlmutter in the future. And then it can really reduce the effort too, because rather than everybody trying to rebuild and create this environment, you could all share it, for example. So, you can have a community image that everybody just knows to use that and it's already been validated. So very quickly, just sort of shifter and Docker in action. We'll start with creating an image and um, somewhere on here, you'll notice that it says laptop. So we don't currently allow you to build images at NERSC, um, mainly because you would need, right now, uh, you'd sort of need Docker installed and for the reasons I listed above, we can't have Docker on the system. So that's why you can't currently build images uh, on Quarry. But on your laptop or workstation or somewhere else, you would um, create a Docker file. This is what it looks like. It's pretty simple. Uh, there's just a couple of kind of primitive commands that you can use to build up uh, pretty complex applications. So you base it, when you start, you start from some base image typically. So that could be a distribution like Ubuntu or there may be one that already has a lot of the tools already installed in, and you could start with that. So your, um, you know, your collaboration might have a base image, for example. This is an older syntax, but you usually have a maintainer that says, um, you know, who built that image. This is kind of an optional thing, but good practice. And then you typically use these two primitives, run and add to build up the image. So run basically says, inside this environment I'm building, do this, operation and you're basically creating another layer of the onion for this environment and you just keep building up from there and then the final product is this is an is an image the other thing you can do is add that basically add or copy that takes content from outside the the container that you're building and brings it into it so that could be from your local file system it could be from uh, a url or something like that so these these two kind of operations are usually what you use to, to build up your image. And so you would use Docker to build the image uh, like it's shown below, and then you would push that to a registry using Docker push. So similar to how you would do like a, a push to a Git, GitHub repo. Once uh, your image is built and ready, then you can uh, go to Quarry and you can um, you can run it. Actually, you don't even need that module load. Boy, there's a couple of anachronisms in these slides I'm realizing I have to update them. So here it shows an example of how to submit that job through the batch system. You can also run it on the compute, I mean on the login nodes as well. So <clears throat> this shows one good practice, which is you can actually specify the image you want to use inside your batch submission script. And uh, the integration we've done with Shifter and Slurm will actually make sure that that image is kind of prepared and ready to run. And so this is, when you're trying to run at scale, this is the practice you want to use. But the key thing here is the only real difference in how you run the application is 
there's just this extra shifter in the middle there. So you say S run um, like you normally would for doing the slurm, slurm run. But then before your application, you just have shifter in the path. Uh, alternatively, you can also do, uh, you can specify the, the image as part of the shifter command. But again, if you're running at scale, you'll want to use it in the batch script. Uh, one question is, can you use shifter with MPI applications? And the answer is yes. Um, we've got a, basically integration already done on the system. So if you build your application using a uh, fairly you know, recent version of mpitch um, and follow this recipe, then at, when, we run, uh, when we run that application and with shifter, we'll automatically bind, um, kind of map in the MPI libraries for the Cray system into your container environment. And so you'll get the optimal performance, just like if you'd used, uh, you built it natively on the system. Uh, so this is the common model that we recommend and there's uh, documentation on the documentation side on how to do this. So this is just a quick example here. We're gonna base off of a, a, a base image that we developed a long time ago that has MPI already installed. We compile, add in our example application, compiling it using MPICC. And then we can build that image just like we showed before, and then uh, use this recipe to execute it. Uh, Lori mentioned that we recommend Shifter and Docker images for MPI applications at scale, and this kind of demonstrates it. So this is the Pynamic benchmark which is um, a, whoops, sorry, uh, which is a benchmark that simulates uh, a kind of a complex Python application loading up a lot of libraries. Uh, so here we're running it, not even at fair, really large scales, but we show that Python application being in different file systems. So that can include the Lustre Scratch file system or uh, the CFS file system. And in general, the best performance we get is with Shifter. And it's for those reasons that Lori was just describing earlier. Python's got to go through and kind of walk the file tree to build up the namespace uh, for all the libraries that are present. And you think about every node, every process starting up, they've got to, it has to do that operation. And so it just leads to a lot of metadata um, operations on the file system. And with something like Lustre, that means all of that traffic goes back to a small number of nodes. And with Shifter, what it can do, most of that can be resolved kind of locally on the node because it kind of has all the metadata already in the image. Um, so again, this is something we identified early on and it's been, uh, hold on just a second, my network went unstable for a second. Okay. Um, can people still hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good. Been having internet issues in the last couple of days. Um, okay, quickly, uh, Shifter versus Docker. Um, just a few things that you need to be aware of. The biggest is the, the first two. So one is the process is run as, you run as yourself, not as root. So sometimes you'll run into images where they just weren't designed with this in mind and it could cause problems. Uh, typically there's easy ways to work around that, but um, you know, just something to watch out for. Another is that images, we, Shifter mounts the images up read only. This is really critical to how the scaling works. Uh, some images will, are designed to maybe make changes to the configuration at runtime and maybe in a directory that's, you know, like in Etsy, for example. And so this could, could cause issues. Again, there are ways to work around it, but it can be a little bit of a gotcha. It, you know, less of an issue, but we mount up home directories and global file systems automatically. So those are already gonna be in your, um, you know, visible and you typically will start out in the directory that you um, started Shifter from. And then there are some direct Docker file directives that aren't uh, supported by, by Shifter. But again, those, ter those top two are the main ones that will typically hit people. Um, you can, uh, just like with Docker, you can do volume mount. So you can take a path outside the 
of shifter and make it present inside uh, the container in a path of your choosing. So this can be useful for making, um, you can sort of always have your data show up as slash data, for example. And then that way, as you move from different systems, uh, you can kind of abstract out the, the location of things. There's a feature also called per node write cache that creates something that's like a local disk on a, on a node, has not quite as good a performance, but it can give, um, give good performance for certain patterns. So for example, if you want to run a database on a compute node, which we've had people actually do this for some specific reasons, uh, this feature here can be useful for that. Another is um, when you're running, um, um, gosh, I'm blanking all of a sudden, Spark, uh, it wants to have a local disk. It kind of assumes local disk. And so uh, we've used this. In fact, we added support for this because of Spark. And then uh, finally, if you have content that you don't want to put on a public uh, registry like Docker Hub, we do operate a private registry and you can uh, push your images to that. You may, I can't remember if we had earlier talks about SPIN. SPIN is our system for hosting kind of persistent edge services. Uh, it's also container-based, but again, there's a distinction. So Shifter is what we use for running HPC jobs, um, containerized applications that are gonna run for a period of time and exit whereas spin is what we'd use to run containerized services. So that might be things like databases or web portals or uh, web services, for example. Um, and just to show, while we originally designed Shifter really for data intensive kind of applications and things that maybe we didn't envision running at super large scales, we have seen examples of people running to the full size of a uh, quarry. So this is, probably the biggest kind of hero run that I've seen with um, containers. And this was a cosmic microwave background simulation that ran across all of Cori k and full, uh, full scale. And in this case, Shifter was really pivotal to them getting these jobs to run because it was a Python application around some other libraries. Uh, so Python was kind of the glue code for all this. And the startup time because of these uh, issues we talked about earlier, was just killing their ability to get these jobs uh, run on Cori until they moved it to containers. Um, all right, and then um, a little bit about usage of containers at NERSC. Uh, this is a snapshot from 2018, trying to generate uh, one for, for this past year. But you can see a number of different applications that have run using containers. A lot of these do happen to come from the high energy physics and experimental kind of use cases and applications, um, but we do see others besides that as well. And we've gone from containers being, you know, just a very marginal amount in 2014 to over the past couple of years, it's, you know, in the six to 8% range um, is what we're seeing. And there've been, you know, thousands of different images that people have pulled down and run at NERSC. And, um, 900, over 900 unique users that have used uh, Shifter at some point in time. To learn more, there's uh, there's information on the doc site. And again, just like we've said with the other things, if you want, um, we're also looking for ways to improve the documentation. So if you have suggestions on things to add, um, please let us know. There's uh, other training material out there that you can look at. So we've given S uh, tutorials at things like SC and ISC and the Exascale uh, Summit meetings. And so those are out there if you want to consult them. And then there's numerous resources, of course, on Docker. And that's it. Um, maybe I didn't have time to add a slide on it. Well, I guess we're at time. So I'll, I'll just leave that and see if there's any questions. All right. So Shane, there's one question. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have some GPU architecture aware applications, is there a way to build a Docker container away from Cori in such a way that those reflect the Cori GPU architecture and not the architecture of the build environment? Yeah. Okay, so I think I thought it, maybe if I'm gonna interpret the question as, can I use containers to, 
Oh, just a second, let me let my network recover. Um, can I use a container to, to run GPU applications and get, you know, sort of native performance? And the answer is yes. We've already got uh, recipes, I think, up uh, on the doc site on how to use uh, containers on the GPU nodes. And uh, there's some flags that are enabled by default. So for the most part, it should just kind of magically work. But if you run into cases where it doesn't, let us know and we can work through those. But um, the short answer is yes, it should be possible. <laughs>